Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at um, starting a Zoa rock or a Zoa garden. So as you can see from from my tank, we've got quite a few Zoas, Zoanthids in the tank already. Um, Zoas are probably one of the most easiest corals and one of the corals that probably most people start with. They come in a vast vast array of different colors different growth patterns different sizes you got you know zoas and pallies which are very similar pallies tend to be a bit more bigger and obviously certain pallies like the pallygrandis they have a lot more toxins so you have to be a bit more careful around them this video is how i do it um you don't have to follow exactly how I do it. This is just, you know, for, for you guys to see maybe different methods, how different people do it. So obviously this rock that I bought, it came with most of these I was already on it um, from a friend's breakdown. Uh, some of these I was, I swapped with him. So some of these are from one of my old previous tanks before I closed that down. And then a lot of them are, are what he's bought on his own. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's Zoas tend to do better in, you know, lower flow, lower light. And as you can see, when I've just put this rock in this tank, there's some Zoas up there, which are probably only two inch away from the top of the water which is in my opinion far too high which is why a lot of these zoas the polyps are really small and then obviously the lower down you get you get much bigger heads because they're trying to soak up as much light as they can so there's a few different ways you can do it you can get the zoas off and put them onto a, a piece of rock like this and just let them take over it on its own. I've started Zoa Gardens from single polyps, from colonies, all sorts really. And this is just the way that I do it. So let me show you what we've got here. Um, if you are doing it from single polyps, you'd obviously be better off trying to get it onto a plug. So these are some plugs that I've already used. Um, obviously cyanide cyano acrylate glue this is the stuff that i tend to well i've not got much else left at the moment so this is what i use but i do try and use the um the ecotech glue or the vrs glue whichever i can find cheapest at the time and then we've got these uh frag rock holders and basically my my intention is that i can get two of the zoa colonies off that are in a decent got a decent amount of growth on them already if they haven't got a plug on them already I'll put a plug on them and then we'll drop them in here and then over time obviously they'll grow out and they'll encrust and well not encrust but they'll they'll mesh out and create a nice mat and then obviously these will just sit on what I'm planning on sitting on the sand bed so yeah I'll um I think what we're going to go with today, them scrambled eggs are far too close to the top. I love scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs are a, a really good zoa to um, to get growing and then get fragging. Because obviously all, people always want scrambled eggs. They're one of the, one of the bread and butter corals of zoas. Um, so yeah, one of them will probably be the scrambled eggs. I wanted to get the rasters off as well, but I think having them two together, both being quite yellow, will will leave them. What I want to do with the scrambled eggs is probably get some something that's pink or a bit more different colour, maybe a contrasting colour. Just looking around, see what we've got. Got some utter chaos just below that Acan or Micro Musa. Um, Utter Chaos are pallies, but they're not doing too well. They've obviously been on this side of the tank where the tank's not as well lit. 
and as I said I'm, I'm still getting around to uh, to sorting the lights out just need to get some metals to make metal to make a new bracket however I have just seen got some hornets up there so I think them scrambled eggs and them hornets up there which is just where's my finger there they might be the go-to zoas for today obviously if I wanted a really big impact straight away I'd go for something like them they've got really good growth really quick growers but obviously the quickest growers usually aren't as pretty just like these so yeah, I'll, um, I'll pick the camera back up once I've got these out of the tanks. It's going to be a bit difficult to get them out of the tank while I'm videoing. And uh, I'll come back to you and just show you how I glue them onto the plugs and then get them in the tank. I've managed to get the phone on the tripod so I should be able to show you. Sorry if it's a bit shaky. Um, so what did we say? We said these scrambled eggs here. And they've just pulled straight off. Them. you can see there's there is a, a decent amount of growth on them which just means that if you're starting from a single polyp it's obviously going to it's obviously going to take a lot longer to uh, to get growing whereas if you start from a decent amount from the get-go your chances of number one survival and number two faster growth is a lot better and then yeah we've got these hornets I'm not sure which hornets they are I'm not that clued up on zoas as I used to be and obviously there's a lot there's a lot of different names and a lot of different morphs people selling things that are one thing and they're not so yeah I'm gonna set the tripod up and show you a bit closer how we get on so we've got that set up and I'm just going to take a seat and we'll have a look at getting these stuck onto this rock. So I can see from the hornets, two, four, six, eight, ten. It's probably about 13 uh, zoas on there. And if I try and put it on that rock, it does, it does fit in okay which will allow a bit of a better natural growth pattern because if I put if I put it on a plug just flip this out if I put the plug in there and then stick this on top the zoas have got to grow down to get, grow out so I think what I'll do with that one is just keep that In there like that don't think it's gonna fall out the bottom which is good and then the scrambled eggs on this side is not as ideal that plugs a bit too big but there is a bonus to this is that obviously I don't have to use any glue I'm just hoping that they stay in where they're meant to stay and they start to grow out and grow over that nicely. I'm going to have to uh, get the glue out though because as I've pushed that in the Hornet one in there, two zoas that were just on the edge have been scraped off. You should obviously be wearing eye protection and gloves if you're working with zoas. But it's up to you follow whatever guidance and instructions you want to follow and obviously most people most people try and cut corners until it bites them in the butt and then they'll start taking care so that's them in that glue don't like gluing zoas directly just because 
especially these ones they're quite small so you can never tell whether you've got glue in the mouth or not where are we but that's a closer look at what we've got so them scrambled eggs a bit of a weird growth pattern on them anyway they've not they've not grown in a solid mat they've spread out gone around the sides gone underneath whereas the hornets have stayed pretty much in one space so I'll take you off the tripod and we'll get these in the tank. So back to the tank, back to the placement of the zoas. I think we're getting enough light down here. There's obviously some growing on the sand bed back there. So I think that's where I'm going to aim for. Might just have to uh, shuffle a few things out of the way make sure the female clown doesn't attack me too much but yeah that rocks in so we're now what date is it it's friday the 13th today friday the 13th of january 2023 i'll do regular updates keep checking in see where we go see the check the progress of the growth yeah follow along if you don't agree with what I've done or if you feel like there's a better method of doing this let me know but I have got other stragglers of zoas so if you wanted to you could add some more onto this one it's just because it's a two Two whole frag rock basically um, that I've put them on there. I have obviously got another another rock which is five holes. If you want me to fill that full of zoas as well, let me know, leave a comment. And if you've got any uh, preference of zoas, let me know. Obviously, there's quite a few uh, quite a few different types that I've got. I do love the green implosions, I know a lot of people don't just because of their rapid growth and a lot of people don't seem to like green in reef tanks. Me personally I love green, I think it's one of the most luminous colours that there is, especially under quite a decent UV, but as you can see because we've not cut into any of these zoas, they were already starting to open back up and it shouldn't take long before we start seeing some new growth. I think while I've got my hands in the tank, I'll uh, move the direction of this clam. He's obviously opened up there and fish have knocked him and he's moved about, which I'm not overly happy about. Mushroom corners doing quite well. Love these teal blue mushrooms we've got some reds uh, recordias which are obviously quite aggressive the green and then we've got some superman discosomas this mushroom uh, this rock here is absolutely covered in just purple mushrooms there's one green I think it was a Grinch Redactus mushroom. That's it, there's no more shrooms over this side. Yeah, if you like the video guys, give it a like. Subscribe to check on the progress. Leave a comment if there's anything that you think that I've done wrong or could be doing better. Cheers. Hi guys, so it's been about a week since I did the Zoas on the Zoa Rock. As you can see, I've got some algae starting to form on the rock, so it's not nice and clean and white like it was. But the zoas are doing well. Them scrambled eggs are starting to take off. They are not mounted onto the rock yet. I think they're just filling up the disc. And the hornets are starting to get a bit bigger as well, which is positive. 
everything else is doing quite well. The only thing that's not doing well is the Duncans. So they what I fragged up in one of the last videos. Don't know what's gone off with them. Uh, the other two frags that were there, they completely died. I have noticed a lot of the hermits on them. But I don't know whether that's just because they was dead anyway and the hermits were just picking off at the remaining algae and flesh. Or whether they contributed to them dying. But to be fair, they weren't doing well anyway, which is why I fragged them up. So it, it's hard to to say exactly what the reason was for that not doing well. All the other Duncans in the tank doing well. I've got that one in the middle. Got the other one over there that's doing well. One at the top. That has been looking really rubbish lately. I've recently been doing something new. There will be a video coming out on that. Which I believe has has contributed to some good things happening in the tank other dunks over there doing well and yeah the zoas now on this top rock really starting to fill out i have lost a couple along the way um there's obviously someone here that aren't doing well at all because the aptasia still battling that i have lost one um peppermint shrimp when I come down at night time once all the lights are off and have a look all I can see is one and a couple of weeks ago when I'd see him it'd be out on this rock or in between this rock or on the back wall and now where I've started seeing it is is right behind this hammer, hammer that's on the on the sandbed right around there it, it just stays down there swaying so not overly impressed with peppermint shrimps. Don't know whether they did any had anything to do with the Duncans not being great because it's it's in a similar area. I just don't know. Um but I've got some uh I'm going away for a week so the tank will be left for a week with somebody looking after it and then once I get back I'm gonna look at um getting some nudibranchs in. The aptages really are starting to do my head in. Uh, you can see that well, you can't see because of the mango in the way, but all them there, they're just they're affecting the zoa growth around them. Obviously, the Duncans, there's a few more heads underneath what you can see, but because of the aptages, they're just stinging them, so they're not opening up. Did get uh, two more NEMs, which I didn't video. Um, somebody closed their tank down, dropped a load of stuff off with a friend of mine, and he said, look, I've got two two bubble tip NEMs on this rock, do you want them? And I was like, yeah, I can do. So one's down there, it's quite a big one. It's, it is a really nice piece, though it's a lot brighter than my others. And there was another one next to it, but as I've shuffled the rock around, he decided to go for a walk, and he actually wedged himself right down in the back there and I woke up this morning and he's now on top of the Zoa rock so I'm hoping he doesn't cause too much destruction as he works his way around but obviously this this part of the tank here is is a lot darker than what this is over here so I imagine this this area where he's sat at the moment is not his final resting place yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how the zoas have, have finally started growing. Uh, it's took them a while, which is is typical for, for zoas. They can spend months not doing anything, and then out of nowhere they'll just bloom and completely grow like nuts. So... Yeah, I think I'll obviously wait another week. I've got some going on holiday, so once I get back, I'll do another update video, see what's what, get a water change done. 
and work out where where this nymph finally decides to live. I have turned off my MP10 just because it's not got an M guard, so I don't want that. I don't want any of the NEMs going through it, and especially not while I'm away. Because who I'm leaving the tank with is not going to know what to do. So, the main corals that I got at the start of the year, they're all doing well apart from the Akan Echinata. Now, I know the NEM's going to be stinging it. But I've tried to move it to a, a darker place of the tank. And it's it's a weird one because it's only slowly receding. It's not like massively receding. All the parameters in the tank are doing well. I'm not usually a uh, a very good candidate for testing. But these last couple of weeks I've been testing a couple of times a week. Just to make sure that there is nothing off balance. I'm dosing off a reef, which is keeping everything tip top. And I have to start using two new products, which I've never used before. But they are definitely, I believe, definitely contributing to the good growth. Yeah, thanks for watching. It'll be another week or so before I get another video out. Let me know what you think.